At the height of the punk explosion, almost 40 years ago, a handful of women redefined what it was to be a female artist and performer. They forced their way onto a largely male-dominated music scene and became part of a movement that was to radically change the artistic landscape of this country. They came from the squats and suburbs of London and inspired a generation of ordinary young women to believe they could do whatever they wanted. Along with Susie Sue, Chrissy Hyde, polystyrene in the raincoats, the Slicks were amongst punk's most important figures and Viv Albertine, their guitarist, has just brought out her brilliantly titled memoir, Clothes, 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 Music, 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 Boys, Boys, Boys. It charts her life as part of this cultural revolution. These were female musicians doing it on their own terms. No sellout, no compromise, no straightforward sex appeal. And in doing it their way, they set the template for the modern rebel girl. You never heard girls until then absolutely bursting with a really raw primal energy that we had. We're trying to cause a bit of mayhem, to be honest with you. Well, you look like you are. Yeah, we threw a few chairs around. It was a call to arms for the girls. They weren't background dressing anymore. They were Amazonian punk rock warriors. Oh, I don't give a shit if you club or not. It's your attitude that counts. So it was here at the Harlesden Coliseum in London that the Slits, the first all-girl punk band, played their debut gig on March the 11th, 1977. <laughs> Their chaotic performance and in-your-face irreverence made a huge impact on many of those who were in the audience that night. But I just felt like, I wish that was me. This is what I want to be. What they sang and how they behaved just spoke to me. I'm always beating the crap out of the drums. Tessa, all in black, she looks amazing. Ari, more than any of the female performers, and even maybe the men, typify the spirit of punk rock. She's fleshy in her old raincoat. You know, it was a complete revelation to see them because they were just so energetic, so wild. It's pretty extraordinary, actually. No women had ever done this before. The Slits were at the heart of a fledgling London punk scene, which emerged from the clubs and squats of West London. These squats were crash pads and rehearsal rooms, where manifestos were hammered out and punk bands were born. Initially, attention focused on male punk bands, but women soon elbowed their way to the forefront, not just as vocalists, but as guitarists, keyboard players, bass players and drummers. And shortly after the trailblazing Harlston gig, Viv Albertine, who was also part of this closely knit punk fraternity, joined the Slits on guitar. Let's talk a bit about the kind of atmosphere around punk because uh, some people may think of it as a kind of aggressive time, but actually it was quite uh, a kind of open-minded time. The, I the idea was that you could do what you want. There was a kind of DIY ethos, wasn't there, around it? I sort of didn't know punk existed. Well, there wasn't punk, you know. I didn't know there was this way of being yourself on stage and uh, not caring about your accent or how poor you were or where you came from until I saw Johnny Rotten play. And then that was it. It was an epiphany. I think just that package he was, he was as near a girl like me as a, as a boy could be, really. I got left 200 quid, the only money I've ever been left in my life, by my grandmother, and I thought, I'm going to go and buy a guitar. Mick Jones, who was my boyfriend at the time, said, great! I literally couldn't play it. I couldn't hold down one bar chord. And then, I think about a week later, I met Sid Vicious in the street, hadn't met him before, and said, I'm going to make a band, and he said, oh, I'll be in a band with you. You were practising for quite a while, weren't you, with Sid? Yeah, we did spend the whole of Summer 76, <laughs> the hottest summer on record, in Joe Strummer's basement, trying to uh, get a band together. We sort of got used to how it felt to rehearse and turn up every day, and, and then Sid decided I couldn't play well, guitar well enough to be in the band anymore, even though it was my band. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you joined the Slits, and did you get a kind of confidence from that environment? Because when you joined the Slits, it was an all-girl group, wasn't it? Mm. I didn't like it being an all-girl group, and everyone at the time was very against being labelled, you know, because we'd been labelled all our lives. We were just these sort of useless, poor, comprehensive school-educated kids. And uh, I said to Chrissy Hind, who was a friend of mine, oh, Chrissy, I don't want to be in an all-girl group, it's tokenistic. And Chrissy just had said to me, oh, shut up, Viv, and get on with it, they're a good band. <laughs> it's very down to earth. <laughs> It 
It was fun. We were all on the same sort of level. I can't believe how we found each other because even to this day, I've never met any other women like the other three slits. Ari and I especially could write together really well, which me and Sid couldn't. He was really crippling to work with, you know, because, I don't know, he wanted to write songs about S&M and <laughs> concentration camps and things, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. With the girls, I could write a song like Typical Girls, and they all understood exactly what I was on about and the pressures of what's expected of you to be a young woman. So should we talk a bit about Ari? Because she was uh, a very unusual character. She, she did have an extraordinary mind and she was very, very different and very relaxed about her body. I mean, she pissed on stage. Amazing. Not to be shocking, but she basically desperately needed a piss. And she completely liberated me, actually, about my body. I learned a hell of a lot off her and, and we translated that back into the slits as well. You don't feel any cunt. <laughs> <laughs> You can feel the fierceness there, is we very specifically made sure our voices and our backing vocals weren't all girly and breathy. Again, you know, just like when you shout across a playground, you go, oi! You don't go, hey, oi! You do know there's massive, you know, kind of controversy on the internet as to what the lyrics are in the first oh. verse. Nobody knows. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Female punks were trailblazers, creating not just their own space for performance, but their own kind of music their own way of being. They took Malcolm McCarran's manifesto, be childish, be irresponsible, be disrespectful, be everything that society hates. Such confusion could sometimes flip into violence. Did the slits get hassled? They were physically attacked on the streets, literally. You've got to understand that they deeply freaked people out on a psychological level. On the White Riot Tour, we had to bribe the coach driver, Norman, to allow them on the bus. Not because they did anything to him, but he, he just couldn't compute. You know, women weren't supposed to be like this. There were guys just cruising the streets, old-fashioned macho guys who were the norm then, just thinking that maybe how you looked, you were a prostitute. I got spat at and attacked many times. Ari got stabbed. It was just part of everyday life. The slit's appearance sparked controversy, whatever they were wearing or not wearing. But unlike many other female artists at the time, they remained firmly in control of their image, as they showed when they appeared topless on the cover of their debut album, Cut. And here they are, looking fantastic, bare-breasted, defiantly outstaring the camera's gaze. This was an amazingly audacious thing to do. Few female artists of any had posed topless on their album covers, and it caused a big controversy. Rough Trade had a massive argument amongst the staff as to whether they should stock the album at all, and supposedly one man tried to sue Island Records for crashing his Rolls Royce when he saw the three slits bare-breasted on a big billboard. That just evolved that day. We had a female photographer, Penny Smith. We just got a bit over-relaxed towards the end of the day and started <laughs> slopping mud on us and all that kind of thing. But we were very sure that we had to choose um, a photo where the look was right. We looked confrontational. There was no come-hither look or nothing submissive about us. I really like the slits covers. It's earthy. It's definitely making a statement because they're naked. But it's sort of not sexy. It's not objectifying. For every image that went out about us, every word that went out about us, we fought and fought and fought for it to be right because we were redefining how women, girls, were seen in the media. The Slits cover of Cut marked the height of punk's exuberance. By the early 1980s, many of the first generation of punk women left the industry as post-punk shifted to new wave pop. I think anyone who's been confronted in aggressive situations for, say, six, seven years non-stop and having to fight and argue all the time your point of view, you know, whether it's with rasters or A&R men, old boyfriends or new boyfriends or, you know, friends who thought you changed too much, uh, people in the street spitting at you. I mean, seven years of that, yeah, I was exhausted. Yeah! 